Okay, today I'm going to solve a very comprehensive question from the manometer concept. And in this question, I will illustrate many things. First, let's take a look at the question statement. The manometer on the left side of the system has a closed end. So what it's saying is this thing is sealed over there. There's an air, okay? And it says that the pressure at point A is 100 kilopascal in gauge. So right at that point, the pressure is PA. And it's given to me as 100 kilopascal gauge. And the question is asking me, what is the reading at pressure gauge B? So there's a device, the name of the device is pressure gauge, and it's asking me, what is the pressure reading off of this one? And you can imagine what type of absolute or gauge pressure am I going to be re representing? And obviously it will be gauge as the name of the device recommends. So basically what I need to do over here is I need to go down over here and up over here and find the pressure at B. Okay. Let's look at the second half of the question. What is the absolute pressure at pipe C? And it says that take the specific weight of water as 9.8 kilonewton per meter cube. So what happening now is in the second half of the question, you go like this, you kind of bypass this whole thing, and then you go up, and then you go down, and etc. And just to illustrate, these dotted lines indicate oil with a specific gravity of 0.92. This is an ethyl alcohol and the specific gravity is 0.79 and I have water with, highlighted with X it's the water and it occupies this pipe as well okay so I should be able to do something about it let's start with part A of the question in these type of questions my recommendation is to start with the column that you know information or pressure of in this particular case it is this column so I'm gonna start off there so let's put some letters to make our analysis easier. So let's call this ABC is used. So let's call this D and let's call this E right over here. And then go from there. If we need additional points, I will put along the, along the way. My first question to you is, can I simply go out and say that PA is equal to PD? Because there's some height difference over here, okay? So we discussed it in this previous segment, and I highly encourage you to rewatch it if this is not clear to you. But in my system, if I have both liquids and gases, I can simply go out and neglect the effect of elevation change within the gas. Okay? This is only applicable if I have both liquids and gas. So from that logic, you will see that PA is equal to PD. Okay, so that's something. So I'm going to have a line over here. So can I simply go ahead and say that PD, let's look at this point, and D. Can I simply go ahead and say that the pressure on this green line is equal to PD? Well, the answer is yes. Okay, It looks a little bit different. It's not a traditional U-shaped manometer. It's like a V per se. But at the end of the day, I have the same elevation between those D and this. And I have... I am being connected by the same fluid. In this particular case, it is the oil. So I'm good to go from that angle. The question seems like I gave you this pressure value. I'm asking you this pressure value. The thing that I'm missing over here is take a look. I don't know this height, okay? Because I, you know, when I go from here to here, I will reduce my pressure by rho gh, but I don't know this h. I know this whole thing. So in order to accomplish that, what I'm gonna do is I will actually find my pressure like or rather the height, like this. And I don't know, let's call it H, and let's do some math over here. H will be, this entire length over here is given to me as six, right? And then this angle is given as 30 degrees. And from that, what I'm gonna get is six times sine of 30. If you remember, sine of 30 is 0.5. So from here, I'll get three meters. So then the height over here is three meters. Okay. And then this height that I need to know to travel from here to here, then it will be one meter, right? The reason is that this whole thing is four, this thing is three, so then I'm left with one. Four minus three is one. Okay, so it seems I'm doing fairly good so far. So let's just write what I said. PAG, which is given to me, will be equal to PDG. PAG will be equal to P. DG, that's the first thing. And the second thing is PEG will be equal to PDG minus specific weight of the fluid that I'm traveling in times the height that I travel, okay? 
So let's discuss that before I just plug the numbers in. Um, note here, I'm going from this pressure value to this pressure value. This, as you remember, when I go up, I decrease the pressure. When I go down, I increase the pressure. From, from that logic, you can understand that PE must be lower than PD, or this green line. Okay, and I see sometimes confusions in my examinations from this, so I want to give an example to you. Okay, let's say that the pressure over here is 5 kilopascals. So then PE must be lower than, mathematically speaking, 5 kilopascals. And let's say that it's 4 kilopascals. So then, look how I form my equation. I said that PE is equal to PD, which is like 4 is equal to 5. You see, that's why I have a negative sign here, mathematically speaking. Next thing is, I wasn't given the specific weight of the oil. So that's a problem maybe. But one thing is I'm given the specific gravity of it, which is 0.92. So let's assess that. If you look at my first module, specific gravity is equal to density divided by density of H2O or water at 4 degrees C. So now I need to do a little bit of a trick over here, which means multiplying both the numerator and denominator by G. Can I do that? Oh yeah, absolutely. If I want to, right now I can cancel G's as well, which I don't want to do. What is the multiplication of rho times G? That is actually the specific weight of the fluid that I'm interested in. And this becomes the specific weight of the water at 4 degrees C. And in this question, this is given to me as 9800 in SI, Newton per meter cube, and 0 0.92. What is the unit of FG? It doesn't have units. So from here, you can see that I will write here 9800 times 0 0.92. Okay? And this number was given to me as 100 kilopascals. Now, am I going to write here 100? No. So it's going to be 100,000 because the SI unit of pressure is pascals, not kilopascals. Okay? And if I simply go out and plug these numbers into my calculator, I will see that my PEG will be 90,984 pascals. And if I want to write this in kilopascals, I'll simply go ahead and call it a 91 kilopascals. Okay, so now let's see where we are at. Okay, so I have some good things happening. I know the pressure at E. How is the relation between PE and PB? They are the same. I just discussed this at the beginning of the segment. If I am dealing with a gas, elevation change in a gas, when liquid is present, I'm simply going to go ahead and neglect and if you want to, you can go ahead and do this. The specific weight of air is 12 Newton per meter cube, which is tiny, times 1. So you can subtract 12 from the va value over here. But you don't need to, okay? Because I said that this is, hey, approximately 91 kilopascal. Or you can see there's a 12. So the answer will be 90,972 pascals. But you don't need to do that. Anyways, I'm going to approximate that as 91 anyway. From here, I will say that PEG will be equal to PBG. And this is the first component of the question that I needed to be analyzing. All right, so far so good. So now I know all the way over here. The next part is asking about all the way to this section. Okay, so I have to follow that. So, okay, so now this is, a, this is good. So I know the pressure in here, for instance. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go over here and find my pressure right, right at that intersection, okay? And I'm going to call that point F. And let's put over here. So what is this height difference from here to here? That's my question, because there's some height difference. How am I going to find it? Oh, yeah, I see it. You see, this height is 3. You see, this height is 2.5. So then if I look at it, this will be 0 0.5, right? 3 minus 2.5. Good. So I can simply go ahead and write this over here. This is going to be 0 0.5. The unit will be meters, right? Okay, so that's good. And also let's call this G. Let's call this H. I think that's all I need because I have C over there. I will go up over here. I will go like this. Then I will go down. My question is, can I relate F and G? So basically what I'm asking is this, can I, they are the same elevation, that's the significance of that point. So can I simply say that PF is equal to PG? 
Now it says, yes, I can. Okay. This is a little bit unconventional in a sense that this is connected from the above. Usually they are connected from the below, right? But that doesn't really matter. So from that region, I will go and say that PF is equal to PG. And then I need to find my H. So the thing that I'm missing over here is this height, this height right over the ear. Okay, how am I gonna get it though? Let's see. Okay, so this is five, this is four, bingo. We can find it from here, right? The distance, distance between this five minus four. So that becomes a meter right there. That becomes a meter. And then this height is four, so that's good. So I have everything that I need. So let me go ahead and do it. So my PFG will be equal to PGG. It's getting complicated in here. Okay, good. So, so far so good. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my PHG will be equal to PGG plus, because I'm going down, specific weight of ethyl alcohol, okay? I'm gonna call this EA, ethyl alcohol, times, which is one. I need to go to the PCG, which will be equal to PHG plus specific weight of water, which is 9,800 given to me, times the distance that I travel down, which is four. So let's take a look over here, whether I'm making any mistake or not. No, I, I, I'm, I'm good, okay? Um, note that you don't have to find H, you can go from simply from G to all the way to C, right? Because that's, I'm doing two step process, but one thing I would like you to be careful about is treat these as two separate liquids, right? First I go down in ethyl alcohol for this distance, then I add some more, and that will be within the water, okay? So be careful about that part. I sometimes see issues. All right, good. Then I will take this over here and plug it into there. So I will get my PCG will be equal to PGG. You can see over here, PGG is PFG, and which is 100, 4, 5, 0, 8, so far, plus, so specific weight of ethyl alcohol was given to me as 9,800, times 0 0.79 times 1. So this component over here is PHG. So now I write only this component so far, then I need to add this, right? So let's add that as well. Let's not forget that part. Then I'm going to add myself 9,800 times 4. So then when it's, when it's all said and done, you do see over here that my PCG will be equal to 104, 508, plus 9,800. I can take in the parentheses of 9,800, and it's gonna be 4.79, okay? And then when I simply go ahead and plug this into my calculator, I get myself 151,450 pascals. And if I convert this to kilopascals, you can see over here, let's call this 151, 0.45 kilo pascals. Okay. So am I done? No, let's not celebrate just yet. The reason is right over here. Look at this word. It says absolute. I'm interested in absolute value. Okay, that, that is not too much of a deal. We discussed this in the first module. I can simply convert this with this relationship. PC absolute will be equal to PC gauge plus P atmospheric. And over here, this is 151,450 plus P ATM is 325. And when I insert this into my calculator, I will get myself 252,775 pascals. Let's round up. So it's going to be 252.8 kilo pascals now i can celebrate okay so this is the final answer and you can see these two points are actually the same points it's just a different way of representing them i did this on purpose so that you can see how to convert things all right but in typical senses i'm more interested in the gauge 